This video will provide future StormFest event planners and station educators insight into what a day at StormFest looks like from the perspective of the event staff. This video can be used alongside the toolkit to show future educators an example of lesson implementation at the event. The video will begin by giving an outline of training day. This will be followed by a brief walkthrough of the event day setup and will conclude with a deep dive into the lesson plan and workflow of each individual station. The Stormfest training event focuses on providing station educators of all levels of experience in education and watershed science with the tools and materials needed to successfully teach their lesson to a diverse group of students. So I'm Mary Eidman, I'm with the City of Burien, and we really appreciate you taking your time out to come get trained. The training agenda includes a series of presentations covering inquiry-based education. We also encourage them to come up with a question. When you regroup at the end of your session, have some students share their question. That will help you understand whether or not you might be explaining the material in a manner they understand, and also give the students the opportunity to answer other students' questions, right? We want them to be curious. Experiential learning Learning by doing and reflecting upon your experience. So if you're going to be teaching your students something, ask them about it. Ask them to tell you what they learned and then proceed. Working with English language learners, also known as ELL. They like typically to work in smaller groups and they're a little more successful and a little more comfortable in a group of, of their peers. Working with disabled students. At the beginning of the session, you might want to greet the assistant that's with the disabled student and ask them, how can I best engage myself with your student? How to engage students from a variety of backgrounds. One important component is clearly defined roles and expectations. How to deal with disruptive students. So if you're teaching during the lesson and you notice that perhaps someone's becoming disengaged, maybe they're fiddling with their shoe or they're wandering off or they're starting to giggle and you know, elbow with their friend, there are a lot of tactics that you can use. How to deal with potentially gang-affiliated students. For me, I think the importance of gang awareness training is that you're giving people that are touching those students the right information so they're not making it, they're not creating more harm. Treat people like humans and lean into relationships and then we will see a change. Station educators will split off into their different station teams to focus specifically on their lesson and learn how to implement their activity. Station managers introduce the station and then model it as if the educators are sixth graders. After that, station educators are given some time to practice with their partners. By the end of the training, station educators should be able to teach their lesson, tying it to the larger Stormfest event to the sixth grade students, all with differing communication needs that will visit their station on event day. I think probably the main thing I took away from the training was to treat the kids with respect and, and you know, don't, don't talk down to them, don't dumb it down for them. One thing that I found really helpful about the training for today's Stormfest was listening to uh, Marcus, who came to speak with us about gangs. I was impressed with his techniques for how to interact with students, particularly in making sure that we are welcoming every child in the same manner and not giving um, sort of body language cues about caring more for one than another. Uh, and some of the classes, some of the group management techniques that he offered. On the day of the event, station educators arrive and check in to receive their event packet, educator vest, name tag, and station bandana. Educators are given time to grab breakfast and coffee to get energized before heading to their station to set up before students arrive. During station setup, station managers go around to each of their substations to check in with the station educators and make sure they have all of their materials, are on schedule, know what is expected of them, and answer any questions. Once station setup is complete, and before buses begin to arrive, station educators head to the bus drop-off to await their first class. Event staff greet the buses as they arrive and identify each class's teacher to connect them to their station educator. Once an educator has their assigned class, they walk them over to their station. Once there, educators introduce themselves in their own language and ask any interpreters, teachers, and chaperones to introduce themselves as well. Educators will also let teachers and chaperones know how they can assist educators during the lesson and set some class rules with the students. 
Station educators then introduce stormwater and teach the storm drain to Puget Sound connection before beginning their specific lesson. The rest of this video will simulate the experience of a class of students going through each of the stormwater stations. At Watershed Model, students will learn to explain what a watershed is, understand how pollutants impact water quality downstream from the source through the use of the Enviroscape model, how pollution can affect wildlife, and identify potential pollution sources in their communities through the use of maps of their local watershed. During a quick full class introduction, educators will introduce stormwater and a watershed by using the watershed hands activity. Students then break up into two groups. Group A begins with the Enviroscape model, while Group B starts with the Your Neighborhood Watershed map activity. Groups will switch after 15 minutes. Group A will circle up around the model so that each student can see it. Students are asked to identify recognizable features on the model. Station educators then introduce the various types of pollutants associated with these features and ask the students to add them to the model. Station educators pass out spray bottles with water to the students to spray on all parts of the model as it rains everywhere. Educators make observations about what is happening to the model as the rain falls. Once the rainstorm is over, the station educators will ask the students a couple questions to help them understand the impact of stormwater runoff on the organisms that live in Puget Sound. What happened during the rainstorm? What impact might this have on the organisms in Puget Sound? What types of pollutants are entering our waterways? Once it's almost time to switch with Group B, one educator will rinse and reset the model while the other will ask students about solutions. After the switch, students will split into small groups and get watershed maps. The educator will ask students to identify where their school is located on the map and then to find out which smaller watershed this school is a part of. The station educator will then hold up a picture of a storm drain to model how these watersheds are connected. Next, students will identify potential pollution sources within their watershed. Students will place pollutants on their maps where they have seen or think these pollutants could be. Once a pollutant is on their map, they will trace how it might get into the Puget Sound. While they are doing this, students will think of solutions to stop these pollutants from entering Puget Sound to share with other Activity B groups. At the end of the activity, the class will come back together and discuss these solutions. Once time has been called, station educators will use their class rotation schedule to remind the class where they are headed next. The station will be reset and restocked, then educators will hold up their station sign so the next scheduled class can find them. This will be done after each station rotation. At the Stormwater Pollution or Macroinvertebrate Station, students will learn how macroinvertebrate or stream bug tolerance relates to water quality. Create a pollution tolerance index using macroinvertebrates from Des Moines Creek and share at least one action they can do at home to keep stormwater clean. To begin, educators will introduce the concept of tolerance and how it can be used to measure stream health. They will then explain aquatic macroinvertebrates. What are they? What does their name mean? Educators will explain the sampling process, stressing the importance of trained naturalists being the ones to collect samples so as to avoid harming the organisms or their habitat. Educators will then explain the investigation. In teams, students will sort and identify macros in their sample. They will use the laminated ID sheet to identify the bug. One of the students on each team will go to the Pollution Tolerance Index Board, find the laminated bug that matches the bug in their sample, and stick it on the correct level of the tolerance board. Teams will repeat this with the other bugs they find. The class will come back together at the Pollution Tolerance Index Board to look at their results. Based on what was observed most in their samples and what was observed least, the class will come up with a group score. Educators will lead the scoring process. The group score will be used to determine the health of the stream and its habitat. Educators will make the connection of how human behaviors can impact water quality by working with students to identify what might be on our road that ends up in our local creeks by going into the storm drain. Educators and students might discuss car washing on pavement, pet waste that does not get picked up, yard chemicals, and vehicle leaks. Educators will then ask students to identify some actions that they can take at home to prevent sources of stormwater pollution that they just discussed. At Schoolyard Solutions, students will perform an experiment to understand and compare at least three best management practices, or BMPs, to reduce stormwater runoff pollution that can be used at their school or in their community. Educators will introduce stormwater by having students think about what happens during a rainstorm and the three ways in which stormwater can move. Soak in, 
run off, or flow into. Students will get more specific by thinking about their school and what happens to the stormwater there. Because today, they will be stormwater engineers conducting an experiment to see how different solutions might help the watershed around their school by reducing stormwater runoff. The first experiment will demonstrate the impact of impermeable surfaces on stormwater runoff. To begin, educators will ask students about potential solutions to decreasing stormwater runoff. Educators will then introduce samples of permeable pavement, rain barrels, and native plant gardens. Following this, educators will distribute solutions cards to students. Students will read about the solutions on the cards and then use them to conduct the next experiments. However, before conducting the experiments, students will predict how much water will flow through them based on the BMPs on each card. Based on the results of their experiments, students will discuss which BMP had the greatest impact on reducing the amount of water that flowed through their experiment. Students will use a school map to find impermeable surfaces and add them to the map. Using the solutions they learned about in the sponge experiment, students will propose solutions they could use at their school to reduce stormwater by labeling areas on the map where they could implement the solutions. At Stormwater Work Zones, students will get a glimpse of the day-to-day -day operations of stormwater field professionals in their local cities. Students will observe demonstrations of various stormwater public works equipment, including pipe inspections by a camera truck and vectoring a catch basin. At the vector truck station, stormwater public works staff will introduce themselves and give an overview of the role they play in maintaining and protecting our storm drain systems. Staff will introduce a candy bar wrapper and discuss how it might make its way into the storm drain system. They will then explain what types of materials are typically found in a basin prior to cleaning it. And finally, they will explain where the trash goes and how it is disposed of. Students will have the opportunity to ask staff questions about their jobs. At the camera truck station, staff will introduce themselves and give an overview of the role they play in maintaining and protecting our storm drain systems. Staff will introduce the scenario of a potential illicit connect, where the public works department received a call about a foul smell coming from a storm drain and how they would respond. Students will have the opportunity to sign an excavator bucket. Staff will explain what the equipment can be used for and allow students to ask questions. At the Communication Solutions Relay, students will explore solutions to stormwater runoff pollution in their communities with the help of a relay race. To begin, station educators will ask students what stormwater is and that they identify potential types of pollution that can be found in stormwater. Then students will break into groups of six to play the relay game. This activity is designed to teach students proper waste disposal within the setting of a relay race. Each of the six students per team will have a different task, including garbage pickup and sorting, with the first team to complete each task declared the winner. Once the race is over, educators will bring students back together to discuss how the actions they exercised in the relay help reduce stormwater pollution and to consider other pollutants and solutions not covered in the relay. At this station, students will create outreach materials to share a message of stormwater pollution prevention and pledge to take personal actions to reduce stormwater pollution. Students will try to convince their classmates to take action to reduce stormwater pollution by coming up with possible solutions to common types of pollution. Educators will talk about commercials, ads, and PSAs to explain that students will be creating ads to convince their classmates to change their behavior to help their community and environment. Educators will divide students into six groups and each will get a pollutant card and materials to create their poster. Once finished, each group will have one minute to present their poster and do their best to actually convince their classmates to do what their ad says. Students will get to vote on their classmates' presentations. At the end of the activity, students will make a pledge to take action of their own to improve stormwater in their community. Educators will let students know that they will receive a pledge card and write in the action they can take with their family once they get back to their classroom. Once teachers have received their pledge cards, educators will walk classes back to their buses. 